Welcome everyone to Clevedon Baptist Church. Welcome if you're joining us online. We are continuing with our Songs of Creation preaching series. And so today we're going to look at Psalm 104. We uh, have the opportunity to uh, hear some more stories from uh, the UK and overseas with the Reactivate video from Alpha and Tear Fund. We're going to take the opportunity uh, to pray for the world today and how we need to be praying, interceding for all that's happening around us. In our worship, we will have this opportunity to declare our faith together. We gather here to worship and we gather praying together knowing that the faithful love of the Lord never ends his mercies, they never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Let's stand together as we bring praise and worship to God this day. Faithfulness appears to me again. From mountain top or valley low, in every season, this I know your goodness, like the dawn, will break again. Oh, your mercy's rising in this heart again. Soul begins to sing. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Your mercies are new every morning, the new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Yes. 
been a defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is free in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of again for I believe in the name of Jesus oh I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again for I believe in the name of Jesus oh, I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again for I believe, believe in your perfect name, O oh Jesus. And Lord, we praise you. Your faithful love never ends. Lord, we thank you for your mercies. And Lord, as we gather with all that's happening in our own lives and then as that spills out into the world around us all that's going on Lord we thank you that we can declare truth together as your people Lord we pray that you'd give us faith as we declare our decision to believe in you and so we worship you one God Father Son and Holy Spirit, in that precious, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Great, please sit down and we are going to uh, just pick up some uh, family news together. Just by the way, we've got a lovely view out of our window today of, of creation and the river running by, and uh, which is a lovely picture there. So there you go. Uh, but this uh, on the screen has come up, uh, the gathering. Tell us about the gathering event, Jo. The gathering is the event of the year. You've got to book to be on it if you haven't already. Book through Church Suite, let me know, um, ring or email Kelly in the office. It's for all ages, um, 10.30 to 4 o'clock. Okay, so I'm not sure if your mic's totally working there, Jo, at the moment. So the event, 10.30, 4 o'clock. We need to be booking up for that so we... Uh, We'll get on and do that. We're going to sort your mic out so we can uh, uh, hear you in a moment. But while we're doing that, we've got this great video that we're going to watch from Tear Fund. It's the... Uh, um, we switched on now. OK, we saw that out. We've got this great video we're going to watch from uh, Alpha and Tear Fund. They put this together to encourage us in terms of storytelling. <laughs> so it's working now. <laughs> Hopefully...
hopefully that's cleared out. Everybody's eardrums in the building and at home and across the world as we've gone online, just to preview that sometimes our, our systems go wrong. But uh, we're going to watch this video, I hope, in a moment. Alpha, tears, Growing up, it is. I had a complicated relationship with church. It was a place I often found myself in, but I could never understand, engage with, or relate to. It was a place I often felt dragged along to, but never felt at home in. I'd always believed in something bigger than us, but it wasn't until I moved to uni that I really started to explore my faith and question why I was here, what my purpose was, and who I was supposed to be. My friend told me about Alpha. I started going with the hope of strengthening my faith and getting a better understanding of what Christianity really meant, something I'd never been able to do before. It was a place that I felt safe asking questions and discussing the big things on my mind. A few weeks in, I felt like I'd been able to build a great foundation to my faith, and by experiencing the love that Jesus has for me, I found answers to the questions that I'd been holding on to for years and feel less anxious about what my future holds. El ser migrante es de ser valiente, primero que nada, y, y llenarnos de fortaleza cada día, y eso lo da Dios. Dios lo da, porque yo digo que si no tuviera Dios mi corazón, no hubiese podido. Es muy fuerte ser migrante, porque uno deja a su familia por un sueño que no quiere luchar. La iglesia debe abrir sus puertas porque encuentran en nosotros un lugar de refugio y de protección para todos sus derechos. Ellos llegan con una tristeza, con hambre, llegan enfermos, eh, se sienten también estigmatizados, señalados y perseguidos. Un Dios de amor, un Dios que ama al migrante. Yo busqué a la iglesia como refugio y si no hubiese te tenido una atención allí o una aceptación de la iglesia, este, para mí mi vida se hubiese entornado más gris, hubiese sido diferente, distinta. Nuestras esperanzas para la población migrante en nuestra iglesia es encontrar una mejor calidad de vida en todas las áreas, espiritual, que es lo que ellos tanto anhelan, Volver a encontrarse en una iglesia, volver a encontrarse con su Señor y que ellos puedan ser atendidos en todas las áreas de su vida. There's a, a reminder of our, our world in great need. Obviously, we've been dominated this week uh, with the whole uh, horrors of what's happening in Afghanistan. But of course, that's one of many stories being played out in real life of uh, a world gone wrong and of earthquakes and of wars and of people displaced and on the move. And uh, uh, we are going to pray for our world. Uh, John, if you could put my pictures back up on the, the screen, that would be great. I'll move them on then. And um, so we're going to pick up this theme of praying obviously into the whole Afghan situation. Just to say that there are some resources uh, out there uh, if um, you want to get some prayer points and how on earth can we start to pray into this. Uh, BMS World Mission uh, have uh, put together an information sheet. I know you can't read it up there. You need to go online and find that sheet. If you uh, put that into the search, it will come up. There's some uh, prayer points uh, that they've given us uh, so that we can start to pray for. Obviously, BMS World Missions got workers out in Afghanistan and has been doing uh, Kingdom of God stuff in Afghanistan uh, 
uh, and so we're going to be really praying it for them. Uh, open Door also have got some um, uh, ideas of how we could pray. Yeah, on the Open Door's website, there's five ways to pray for Afghanistan today, which is praying for the small group of believers in the country, praying for the displaced, praying especially for the women, praying for the sick, and praying that the country will not be a haven for extremists. And we're going to... Karen's going to come... Thanks, Karen. Come forward up here. We're going to, Karen's going to lead us in a prayer. Uh, that uh, we're praying across the, the nation today as, uh, through, through the Evangelical Alliance, which we're part of, and we want to pray and blend our, our, your prayers, our prayers as God's people uh, for the world today, for Afghanistan and uh, other places that are in so much need for uh, the gospel uh, in their lives. Let's pray together. Let's lift our prayers to our Father for Afghanistan. Father, today we pray for Afghanistan. In recent days we have witnessed the withdrawal of Western forces and the paramilitary overthrow of the country's government by the Taliban. We are deeply concerned about this unfolding situation and the consequences for women, men and children living there. Lord, you hear the cries and see the tears of those formed in your own image. We know that politics, diplomacy and international laws have an important part of, to play in creating and maintaining peace and stability. We pray for wisdom for international leaders in this moment. However, we also see starkly the limits of such endeavours. Human efforts alone cannot compel love of neighbour, let alone enemy. Rather, this is the transformational territory of your word and your spirit. So would you move your hands to change the hearts and minds of oppressors, even now? <coughs> Withhold evil and cultivate good. Banish darkness and bring forth light. We declare your nearness over all who have been abused and displaced, violated and oppressed. Would you open their ears and eyes to your presence? We pray for your church there, that you would comfort and strengthen, protect and bless our sisters and brothers. In, as persecution draws close, would you draw closer still? Teach us how to respond as we place our hope in you and in your good and just plans for creation. Lord, have mercy and hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And we've been thinking about that call to engage in big acts of prayer and we need to be doing that uh, for the world around us at this time. And I know you are and let's keep doing that and uh, with tears and with groans and with words, uh, with uh, fueling our prayers, with prayer points from uh, people on the ground there, let's make sure we continue to pray. We pray to the God who, in whom we can take refuge and shelter and Lord, we pray for your mighty power to be released in the earth in these days as we wait your coming again. Let's stand and let's uh, worship and pray together.
Please uh, sit down. We're going to hear the uh, words of Psalm 104. John, if you could put my uh, pictures back up onto the screen, that would be great. Thank you. So Psalm 104. Let all that I am praise the Lord. O Lord my God, how great you are. You are robed with honour and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clouds. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride upon the wings of the wind. The winds are your messengers. The flames of fire are your servants. You place the world on its foundation so it would never be moved. You clothe the earth with floods of water, water that covered even the mountains. At your command, the the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so that they would never again cover the earth. You make springs pour water into the ravines so streams gush down from the mountains. They provide water for all the animals and the wild donkeys quench their thirst. The birds nest beside the streams and sing among the branches of the trees. You send rain on the mountains from your heavenly home and you fill the earth with the fruit of your labour. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use. You allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength. The trees of the Lord are well cared for, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. There the birds make their nests, and the stork make their homes in the cypresses. High in the mountains live the wild goats, and the rocks form a refuge for the rock badgers. You made the moon to mark the seasons. You send the darkness and it becomes night when all the forest animals prowl about. Then the young lions roar for their prey, stalking the food provided by God. At dawn they slink back into their dens to rest. Then people go off to their work where they labour until the evening. O Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. See the ships sailing along, and the leviathan which you made to play in the sea. They all depend on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them, and they are richly satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them your breath, life is created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance, the mountains smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And God of creation, we 
praise you. Let's use these words to praise our creator together. Great, please sit down. I'm going to turn to Psalm 104. And again, John, if you could put uh, my pictures up, that would be great. Thank you. And uh, songs of creation. And what a song of creation Psalm 104 is. We have this celebration of creation. And uh, we can follow the, the way of Psalm 104 uh, and, and do these five things as we celebrate creation here in 2021. So you may want to note these uh, five uh, things down. And we celebrate creation by observing God's creation around us. That's what the psalmist does. That's what well, we can do. So observing God's creation around us. Secondly, by acknowledging what God has done, what God is doing and what God will do for creation. That's how we can celebrate creation together. Number one, by observing God's creation around us. Number two, acknowledging what God has done, is doing, will do for creation. Number three is serving within God's creation. And number four is talking to God about creation. That's what the psalmist does here. He talks to God the creator, about creation. And then number five, praising the God of creation. Observing, acknowledging, serving, talking, praising. Because we can end up, if we're not careful, with a fragmented, limited, distanced view of creation. Because human fallenness sends us into hiding. Human fallenness means that we isolate ourselves, we live in alienation, we imagine ourselves as autonomous, able to treat creation how we want to treat it. Or to have a creation without a creator. But Psalm 104 counteracts such errors. Psalm 104, this celebration of creation, links us back to Genesis chapter 1 and the days of creation we see there. And so Genesis 1 acts as a kind of springboard. Remember the Olympics and the, the divers on those boards, a kind of springboard or the, the gymnasts in, the, uh, in, in their, on that kind of springboard as they launch into the air and Genesis 1 acts as a kind of a springboard 
for the, for the psalmist here in Psalm 104. So there's doxology and there is theology for us to grasp in this poetic, prophetic outburst of celebration, strong note of celebration here, of concern, and concern comes through in this, in this psalm, of a, a prophetic heart cry to God. And of course of praise, let all that I am praise the Lord, verse 1, and it's repeated, verse 35. Now, we can recognise this kind of scriptural, poetic, praise him-like structure to this psalm, but there's plenty of room for exuberance and wonder of big picture stuff and small detail observation. At your command, the water fled. At the sound of your thunder, it hurried away. Mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Then you set a firm boundary for the seas so they would never again cover the earth. So we kind of got this big picture stuff. Then uh, uh, verse 18 uh, speaks about rock badgers. That's a rock badger. They're lovely creatures. I wouldn't want one for a pet, but uh, they, they, there you go. That they spend 95% of their time sunbathing and resting. So they may have kind of sussed something out in life, I, I don't know. Uh, they have multi-chambered st stomachs. I don't know what that really means, but uh, obviously they can store food in different chambers in their stomachs. Uh, they have a, a, a claw just for grooming. I mean, kind of great, isn't it? You know, like a, a comb on your, your hand, just for, 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 for grooming. It reaches right back to the back. Uh, they have pointed tusk-like incisors, like an elephant. But they only weigh four kilograms, not like an elephant. Uh, and they like rocks. I think that's why they're called rock badgers. But you've got to get this contrast, big stuff. And then let's talk about the rock badgers. Uh, or, um, uh, big stuff perspective, uh, you made the moon to mark the season, the sun knows when to set. There's lovely things, great things about living in Cleveland, and one of them is the beautiful sunsets we get uh, across the, the sea down by the, down by the pier here. Uh, beautiful sunsets on, on, that, on that evening as the sun sets and disappears. Mountain ro rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed. Uh, you make, spring, uh, make springs pour water into the ravine. And you see you get this big picture stuff of, of mountains and valleys and streams and water and supply. And then a, a small but wonderful Detail, easy to overlook, but that the psalmist makes this uh, observation that the, the wild donkeys quench their thirst. Love it. Big stuff, little stuff. All this as the psalmist talks to God the Creator about the world and universe around us that God has created. God of creation. We praise you. Oh Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeming. It's teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. The psalmist looks and observes and appreciates and, and records and notes down and celebrates creation around us. It's a great exercise. You could go and do the same. Look at the big stuff and the detailed stuff, the little stuff, as you observe, as you appreciate, as you record, as you celebrate creation around you. There is a, a recognition of stability. You place the world on its foundations so it will never be moved. That There is the note of fruitfulness, of life and growth, of, of order and of harmony. You made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun knows where to set you send the darkness and it becomes night when all the forest animals prowl about. And then we have the, the sheer variety of it all. God's multifaceted creativity, infinite variety. Never the same snowflake, never the same dew on a spider's web, the smell of cut grass after rain, a dragonfly in sunlight, in sunlight 
What marvellous wisdom the maker displays. The sea vast and spacious. Uh, the dolphins and whales. The earth full of creatures, the great and the small. He watches and cares for them all. The, the rainforest canopies, darken the skies. Cathedrals of mist that resound with the choirs of creatures discordant, outrageous, ablaze in colourful pageants of praise. Above his creation, the Father presides. The pulse of the planets, the rhythm of tides. The moon marks the season, the day follows night. Yet he knows every beat of my heart. And then Graham Kendrick in his uh, uh, worship words of this song God is great amazing come let his praises ring God is great astounding the whole the whole creation sings then there is God's provision of water of food of habitat of times of seasons of work of renewal of life of our absolute need and dependence upon God you, know, you cause grass to grow for the livestock plants for people to use you allow them to produce food from the earth then people go off to their work where they labor until evening all creatures look to you to give them their food at the proper time when you give it to them they gather it when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they're terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the ground. It's part of our praying. God, send your spirit. Renew the face of the earth, this celebration of creation. However, it's important for us to note this, however, human beings not only to observe and talk about creation and acknowledge God at work within creation, they are part of the creation song itself. You cause grass to grow for the livestock and plants for people to use. You allow them to produce food from the earth, wine to make them glad, olive oil to soothe their skin, and bread to give them strength. Plants for man to cultivate. Plants for people to cultivate. Bringing, food, uh, bringing forth food from the earth. See, see, the wording of verse 14 in this psalm uh, carries the idea of serving. As in Genesis 2, where we see that, that God-given human role of working, of caring, of serving, of stewarding creation. In the Garden of Eden, human beings are to work it and keep it, to cultivate it and guard it, to tend and care for it. The Hebrew word to work, it means, uh, uh, means to serve. Which means in turn we are, we are to serve God our creator within his creation and to take great care over creation and guard creation. It's human beings using their made in the image of God, creativity within creation for good here in Psalm 104. And perhaps that we, we take note of that because that could redefine our approach this week as we live, work, serve on our front lines. A celebration of creation. What, what about creation? as a teacher and an evangelist. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small, verse 25. See the ships sailing along, and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. To play in it, it may have in your translation, to play there, to sport in it, um, which you form to frolic there. You may have that in your translation. To play in the sea. Is this a lesson for you? That we need to make sure there's space and time to play within God's creation. Psalm 104 speaks of 
daily work of evening rest. And then creation itself gives an example uh, using this kind of standout uh, creature of the sea. What's it doing? It's playing. Come from the, uh, the generation that was brought up on the, the, the... It's not true, this. Just, I'm just telling you this is not true. Most of what I say is, but this is not true. A Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. Actually, a Mars a day made your teeth bad and made your waistline expand. But that's the truth. But uh, they sold them to us as, look, have this Mars bar and it will help you work, rest and play. I I wonder if we need some help to work, rest and play. See, See, whole life discipleship includes work, it includes rest, but we need to make sure there's room for play. We need space to play. We need time in our lives lives for for play. Otherwise, um, well, Charles Handy was a a, a, a former oil executive, uh, written loads of stuff about business and work, and uh, he recalls this uh, this personal moment when his wife came to him and said, uh, uh, he's he's working 80 hour uh, a week work schedule. She says, I'm really happy for you that your work is going so well. Uh, I think you should know, however, that you have become the most boring man I know. There was unbalance of work, but no play. Uh, Play can seem so trivial sometimes to us. Uh, For some, leisure or play is seen as wasteful, uh, even sinful. Play, of course, can get us into trouble. Kingdom ethics and play need to come together. But work, rest and play. Not all work, not all rest, not all play, but that combination. Here here is a lesson. This powerful sea monster. What's it doing? It's kind of playing. I wonder what that does or what that could or what play should look like for you. What about Christian spirituality and whole life discipleship that that includes play? Well, maybe you want to talk about that. Maybe you want to pray about it. But more importantly, maybe you want to find some space to play. You could even frolic around in the sea off the pier. But do that at the right time, because we don't want anybody floating across to Wales and getting into trouble out there, because I said you should go and frolic and play uh, in the sea because of Psalm 104. Creation as teacher and as as evangelist. We can know the truth about God because he has made it obvious for ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky through everything God made, uh, through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, says the Apostle Paul, his eternal power and divine nature, so they have no excuse for not knowing God. And creation here in Psalm 104 acts like that evangelist. Oh Lord, my God, you are, how great you are. You are robed with honour and majesty. You are dressed in a robe of light. You stretch out the starry curtain of the heavens. You lay out the rafters of your home in the rain clothes. You placed the world on its foundation so it will never be moved. And if you look at the psalm all the way through it, it says, you, 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 you God. You did this, you God, you, you, you. As creation points us beyond itself to God, the living God. For it speaks of our dependence and our need of God. When you give them your breath, life is created and you renew the face of the earth. Then as this song draws to an end, we have this sort of sudden intrusion. It kind of almost spoils the psalm. It's so going so well. It's such a wonderful psalm about creation. And then we have this reference, this mention, this kind of heart cry about sin and evil. 
And because it kind of spoils the psalm, more, psalm but more importantly, it's, it's recreation, sin and evil. In fact, verse 35 causes us to face the, the reality of human fallenness within creation, that creation has gone wrong. Afghanistan, what a beautiful country, people tell us. Creation's gone wrong. The United Kingdom, Clevedon, what beautiful creation around us. But we haven't got to look too far. Creation gone wrong. Let all sinners vanish from the face of the earth. Let the wicked disappear forever. See, verse 35 acts as a, a tiny pointer a single verse that, that points to the, the deep human fallen problem we have. For we have all fallen short and missed the mark. And the psalmist's heart cry ultimately brings the cross of Christ into view. For the cross of Christ stands in the centre of the earth in the middle of history, there within creation, the tree, the cross of Christ, here before us, the cross that redeems and restores and reconciles. And so it's through the cross of Christ that the heart cry of, of Psalm 104 is worked out in, in new creation. So even now, along with the psalmist and the deep concerns the psalmist has and the deep concerns we have about a creation that's, that's going wrong, we can use the New Testament word in. We're able to say we're looking forward to new heavens and new earths as God has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. Verse 35 is a reality check. The world has gone wrong, yet th this is not the end of the story. And in the face of a troubled world, and our world is a troubled world, in the face of a creation gone wrong, we hear the call of 1 Peter 4 as God's people, trust your lives to the God who created you, it says. For he will never fail you. In the midst of trouble and suffering, Peter says, we commit ourselves to our faithful creator and continue to do good. A song of creation. As with the psalmist, we go about observing God's creation around us, acknowledging what God has done, is doing and will do for creation, serving God within creation talking to God about creation, praising the God of creation. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. And we note the two praise bookends of Psalm 104. Verse 1, let all that I am praise the Lord. Verse 35, let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one, God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings, to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. Should we do that? As we come to the end of being together and we get ready to go back out into this troubled world and creation gone wrong, let's go praising. Praising God together. Stand. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope and without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dark 
We thank you for creation and for new creation. New creation because of Jesus. We thank you for the cross of Christ that stands in the centre of the earth, in the middle of history, there within creation, the tree, the cross of Christ, here before us, the cross that redeems and restores and reconciles to redeem the whole creation. You did not despise the cross. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we look out and see the beauty of your creation, as we live in anticipation of the new heavens and the new earth and the new creation, Lord, in these troubled days, Lord, help us to tune in to those words of Peter, 1 Peter 4. Trust your lives to the God who created you, for he will never 
fail you. And so we commit ourselves to our faithful creator and continue to do good in the name of Jesus. Amen.